Hello everyone. In this video, we will talk about the Use Case Manager app. Use Case Manager app is one of the most essential apps in QRadar ecosystem as it provides insights into the security use cases that we have deployed and want to deploy in our environment. There are two aspects to Use Case Manager app. One is the Use Case Explorer and another one is about QRadar tuning. In this video, we will discuss about the Use Case Explorer. On the screen, we can see all the rules that are deployed on QRadar. On the left hand side, we can see the different filters that are available. Applying these filters can help you understand as well as deploy the security use cases. If we want to know all the rules that are related to UPA, we can select the UPA rule attribute and click on apply filters. So let's look at the UPA analytics rules. So the rule is related to an app that is UPA and let's click on apply filters. We see that out of 354 rules which are out there, we now have 136 rules which are present. Now in these 136 rules, we want to find out how many rules are using reference set. For that, we have another filter where we can go to the rule test and say other test. We can expand it and see that we have an option to select a reference set. So what we are looking at is the UBA rules which are using reference set. We apply filter. One more filter is added here and out of these 136 rules that were present, now we have about 50 rules which are using the reference sets and these rules are related to UBA. Out of these, let us look at the dormant account used. Once you click on the rule, the UI that you see is pretty intuitive than compared with the legacy view that you used to see in the rule wizard. We see the test definitions where the last condition is matching the reference set. The reference set in our case is UBA dormant accounts. On the right hand side, we see a beautiful pictorial depiction of the rule in terms of building blocks used and the reference set. You can see that the rule is directly dependent on two building blocks and one of the building block is again dependent on the third building block. Now let us click on show dependency tree and understand the complete security use case in play here. Let us now just look at show the dependence. So there are three security use case in terms of rules which are based on our rule of dormant account. All three rules depend on our rule being designed correctly. Similarly, when you click on show the dependencies, we will see the other rules and building blocks that our rule uses. In our case, we are using two building blocks directly and one building block indirectly. Such pictorial depiction helps to understand the use cases easily. Moving to the left hand side, we see that there are other options available like rule responses, rule limiter, rule details, etc. All these can be used as filters while searching the rules. One important aspect is MITRE ATT&CK. Here you can see that this rule has been mapped to two tactics in MITRE which are credential access and discovery. So for those who don't know about the MITRE ATT&CK, it is a framework designed by an organization called MITRE to help security professionals understand the different tactics and techniques that the adversaries use while attacking your environment. So now we have understood the filters and how to use them. We have also seen the rule details and seen how easy it is to understand and design security use cases with this app. Now let us run through all the filters available in the use case manager. Under the rule attributes, what we can see is the rule name. In the rule name, you can enter the regex and filter the rules. The second one is rule enabled. So you can either click true or false and then click apply filters to see which of the rules are enabled or which of them are disabled using this filter. 
The third one is about the rule or building blocks. So you can select either of one and click apply filters. In the type, we can see that there are four types of rules that are available, event flows, offense and common. You can select multiple or even select a single type of rule and click apply filters. For the origin, you can either select systems user or override. In the rule category, we see custom rule and anomaly detection rule. More about the rule categories and custom rules and anomaly detection rules can be found in other videos in this series. In the group, you can see there are multiple options available. You can select any of them. These are the groups of the rules in which they are assigned. This action is basically the rule action that we have in the rule wizard. The options are very evident like event as a part of an offense, annotate event, what is the severity that needs to be set or the credibility. Accordingly, you can select any one or multiple and then again click apply filters. Similarly, response corresponds to the rule response in the rule wizard and we have all the options available from there. So if someone wants to see like in our example, if and reference set or a reference data was added. You can select any one of them and then click filters. For the creation date, we can select the particular date range, also the time from when the rule were created. This also helps in troubleshooting. Similarly, for the modification, you can select the time and date and the range, and then you can look at the rules that were modified. For the rules, we know that we can write notes and you can actually filter the rules based on the regex. It is very similar to what we have done in the rule name. And for the user behavior analytics, as we have already seen, we have two options for rules which are related to the UB app and ones which are not. The second category is about the rule activity. To understand whether the rule is active or not, we have two options whether the rule was active ever or it was never active and the second option is if the rule was not active then we can select a time frame in which it was not active and see what were the rules that were not active during that time the third category is about the rule test the first one in the rule test is about the test definition so whatever the conditions or the test definitions that we have set we can search our rules based on these test definitions. Again, it is based on a regex. You can write your regex and click on apply filters to see the rules. Log source type. Here you will see all the log source types that are available on your Curator deployment. And you can select the log source types with, for which you want to see the rules. Similarly, for the log sources also, Whatever log sources that we have deployed on this QRadar, we'll see them here. We can select them and click on apply filters. For the log source group, we have about five to six groups here. You can select any one of them or all of them. And once you do that, you can again click on apply filters to see the rules which are related to your log source groups. Whenever we define domains, all these domains can be listed down here and you can specifically search for the rules which are related to the particular domain. We have seen the other test thing and we had many options there. We had selected reference set in our case, but there are other options like the ADL search, custom properties, domains, endpoint, and all these options which are available. The fourth category is MITRE ATT&CK Framework. We have an option here for filter by platform. If you click on it, you can see that we can select any theme and we can also select the table row height options, whether you want it to be compact, short, tall. In the themes we have, whether it should be a light or a dark theme. We have kept everything as default, which actually looks nice. The first option in the MITRE attack is about the tactics. You can very well go ahead and select one of the tactics and only the rules which are related to those tactics will be seen. Similarly for the technique, you can go ahead and select any one or multiple techniques that you want to see the rules for. The third is about the mapping confidence. So how confident are you when the mapping was done 
for that particular rule with the miter attack. The fourth option is actually interesting, which says mapping enable. So if you select true or false, you will understand the rules which have been mapped to the miter attack framework and which have not been. We'll strongly recommend that you map all your rules to the miter attack framework, which will help you to understand your environment and your deployment in a better way. The fifth option is about the content extension attributes. Content extension is available on QRadar app exchange portal and these content extensions can be installed on QRadar. All these filters are related to those extensions. For example, the first one is about the extension attributes. Whether you want to include non-installed extensions also, you can select it and click apply filter. In the second option, you have an option for the extension name. So whatever extensions that have been installed, you will get all these extensions here and you can select any of those or all of those and click filter to see which, which rules have been included for those particular extensions. The third one is about the extension categories. The categories are broadly divided into something like UBA, which is behavioral analysis, then cloud services, compliance, data, etc. You can again select any one or all of them and click apply filters. That was all about the filters that we have available for use case manager. For MITRE attack, rather than clicking on each of these rules and understanding which tactics are being used, we have a chart which can display all the rules at once. Let us click on these attack actions and click on the coverage map. What we see here is the MITRE attack matrix for QRadar deployment and the security use cases that have been deployed. As this is a test deployment, you can see that very few use cases have been deployed and the other use cases if deployed are not exactly mapped to the tactics and techniques. For example, in the privilege escalation, we can see that there is a technique called abuse elevation control mechanism. And there is one rule which is related to it. The mapping between the tactic and techniques in this miter can be one to one or one to many and also vice versa. Similarly, if you click on the other option which is available in MITRE, that is the coverage summary and trend. What we see here is basically the distribution of the rules in terms of percentage of the MITRE attack tactics. And on the right hand side, we can see the heat map that is generated for the coverage of the MITRE. The third option in the attack actions is detected in time frame. Till now, we have seen that the rules were mapped to the tactics and techniques for the MITRE. Here, we see offenses are mapped to the tactics and techniques in MITRE. On the left hand side, we can see that there are filters. In this filter, we can see that this is for the last 24 hours and hence none of the offenses have been triggered and none of them have been mapped to the tactics and techniques. Let's select last one. Here we can see that there are two offenses which were generated for initial access, two for execution, two for persistence. If you want to look at the details, you can click here and here also you can see the list of offenses that are generated. Also, the corresponding rule names are also present. On the left hand side, again, there are similar filters like exclude offenses. So we can exclude some of the offenses also, we can include only offenses which we need for a particular domain by selecting any of it or all of it. The fourth option shows export. When you click on export, there is a pop-up window. In the pop-up window, we can see there are two options for exporting MITRE mappings. You can either export all the mappings or you can export the mappings only for the rules which are selected by using the filters. Also, you can select the export format. The fifth option is the import option. Once you click on it, you can see that there is an option to import the mappings by using the JSON file. Apart from this, when we want to explore security use cases, we would like to see which all log source types are being used in our rules and which log source types are not being used. So if you click on the current and potential coverage, this is exactly what it shows. It shows the rules used per log source types and on the right hand side it shows rules per unused log source types 
if you want to look at the summary of this you can select the second option and if you select the option for summary you will see the same information in a chart form on the right hand side you can see the table showing log source types and the rules related to them as well as the events which match the rules in our QRADA deployment we had Linux OS logs and hence we see them as populated that is all in this video hope you liked it in the next video we will cover how to tune your QRADAR environment using use case manager thank you